second day of two in testifying this time before the House Financial Services Committees. What does that say? What does he say about the state of the economy? Let's bring Doug Flynn in, co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management, because we'd rather hear from Doug than hear from Powell. No <laughs> offense uh, to the Fed Thanks, chairman, Powell. right? There you go. Yeah, you're more exciting than a Fed chairman. Uh, first headline here, though, uh, from the Fed chairman and his testimony stresses the message that U.S. job, the U.S. job market is cooling off and a possible sign of a coming rate cut. So what, I think what that brings up is that we talk about inflation all the time, but the Fed also mm -hmm. looking at jobs. And what are they seeing? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, I, they're referencing the fact that the unemployment rate went above 4% for the first time in three years. It's at 4.1. So we were talking about the, the cooling labor market and it was starting to show. And so that this is the first time they've actually referenced it. So what that's saying is, oh, if inflation is indeed coming under control and now we're starting to see some, some problems in the labor market, that's the two pieces we need to actually begin lowering rates. So that's why the market's really looking at September now as the first cut and two cuts this year. That's kind of what everybody's expecting. And this goes right into to that actually happening. Whether or not it does, we'll see, but that's what he's he's queuing up here. Well, I was looking at, at at least the headlines in and out of other things today on Powell yesterday and also today. And I think, you know, one of the things, there's all this jargon in the financial world that's been around since um, forever is when the economy's in tough shape, you want to engineer what they call soft landing. Now that came up in the testimony and Powell said something to the effect of that's my total focus. Is your view that he can that he can do that? Because that's always the tough balancing act, right? It, it is a tough balancing act and it really comes down to the fact that it, they're going to lower rates. Everybody knows that's going to happen. Yeah. And the problem is if you lower them too slowly, then what happens is layoffs begin to happen as the labor market further weakens. And when layoffs begin, they ramp up quickly. And you can't really get a control on that once the layoffs start happening. So that's the fear of, of lowering too, too, too slowly. If they lower too soon, then what happens is then people start to spend again. Mm -hmm. That could boost the economy. And then inflation could reignite. And the last thing they want is to lower and then have to raise again. That drives everybody crazy. So they're trying to do that bell uh, that delicate balancing act of finding the appropriate and right time. And if they do it, then therefore you have the soft landing of just coming in right where you need it to be, begin lowering at the right time, and everything sort of gets mm. back to uh, the Goldilocks scenario. I knew you were going to say that, yeah, if you want to <laughs> use a Wall Street jargon, Goldilocks. Oh, poor Goldilocks, she gets uh, thrown into this exactly. all the time. Next topic, immigration, uh, which is something we talk about on the show a lot, but it shows how complicated some issues are. This is a new report from a reg regional bank that says, this immigration and the surge in immigration we've seen has actually bolstered the economy and generated little inflation. This is from a regional Fed bank. And what I mean is that, you know, we, we talk about the, the downside politically of immigration and policies that go wrong, but there obviously we need more people coming into the country and it does help the economy when they do so in many cases. So how do you look at this from where you sit? Yeah, I mean, we definitely do. I mean, with our declining birth rate, it's one of the, the key things that we have immigration in, in, in its overall is good for the U.S. Um, at one, uh, this is one Fed regional bank that said this. The Dallas Fed had mentioned that it actually might have caused a little bit of inflation, but the output, the GDP output overall that came of it more than compensated for. So mm. however you look at it, the bottom line is there is a GDP, GDP boost to having immigration and the, and the spending that goes on with it as more people have jobs. We're looking at this and seeing that of, of all the immigrants that came in, Actually, what they see is about 60 percent of them have secured jobs. So that number is right alongside with the job participation rate of of uh, of Americans already here. So if that's true, then then we've been able to absorb this. And that's a good thing. That's kept us having a better economy than right. than Europe and a lot of other places. And so it's just the illegal versus the, the, the exactly. legal issue. Yeah, it's not issue. like you're not endorsing illegal immigration or anything. You're just saying that the, the idea of more people, hopefully legally, coming into the country can help the economy. Uh, one more topic is Tesla before we get to the closing bell on Wall sure. Street here in a minute. Uh, Bill Gross is a very, very well-known investor. He used to be a PIMCO for years and years, says Tesla's acting like a quote-unquote meme stock. Stock has been up and down here. This is what he put on social media. What do you say about Tesla's stock? 
Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit ridiculous to call it a meme stock. What happened was it moved about 40% in the last two weeks. But yeah. but we were talking about Tesla for a long time and how it was really undervalued. And then they came in with this second quarter deliveries and production numbers, which far out outpaced expectations, and the stock moved. So a 40% move in a stock, does, and to get it properly valued, does not mean it's a meme stock. Apple moved 40% in the last couple of months as well. Okay. It's not a meme stock. Fair yeah. enough, Doug. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Doug Flynn on that.